Hi there, welcome to Live with the Paper Pixie. I'm Julie DiMatteo from thepaperpixie.com. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator here in the US, and I'm coming to you live from Alpharetta, Georgia. As you're rolling on in, say hello and where you're watching from. I missed you last week and I missed you last night, <laughs> so I appreciate your patience. I had to reschedule. I was not ready for Live with the Paper Pixie. I am ready tonight though, so welcome. Hi Wanda, hi Diane, Karen, Beth, Alicia, hey, hey, Norlene, hi Joanne, Ginny, Cheryl, hi Lori, Beth, Randy, welcome, hi Minerva. Happy Thursday. I almost said happy Wednesday because it's hump day around here. Not hump day. It's groundhog day around here. <laughs> my husband Brian is sitting to my left watching for your questions. He'll pop those questions up during the live stream. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Thank you so much. I'm excited about tonight's project inspired by a German demonstrator and a project that I have had multiple requests to Pixify. So I have done that tonight. Couldn't get it done in time last night, so. But I did get catalogs out. So let's jump through a few things. Hi, Robin, hi, PJ. Uh, let's see, oops, that's the wrong spot. Here we go. All right, so we are in the month of April, right? <laughs> the April host code is NEF7X3AX. Please use that host code on orders with me under $150. If your order is 150 or more, don't add the host code because you'll earn stampin' rewards on that order. And if your order is $75 or more, the something texture, <laughs> I can't think, textile, I don't even remember the name of the embossing folder, but that's the free gift for this month. That's for orders of $75 or more. And stay tuned, I will be making a couple of changes to my free gift starting on May 1st. So that will, um, that will go into effect May 1st. You'll, it'll be a free gift with orders of $50 or more, and you'll get a choice. So stay tuned for that. Let's see. Um, I, part of why I, couldn't, I wasn't ready to go live last night is I worked hard to get Happy Mail out to my current customers. So if you ordered from me within the last six months, you were on my VIP mailing list for the new 2021 to 2022 annual catalog. If you don't already have a demonstrator or you haven't ordered from me in a while and you'd like to get a copy of that new catalog, you can submit a catalog request at thepaperpixie.com slash happy mail. And let's see, I've got, I'm gonna flip my camera really quickly because I have a couple of flyers to share with you. This week I announced, well, here's the cover of the catalog. I have mine coil bound because it's so much easier to flip through. I can't show you the inside until May 4th, so that's a teaser. But I announced my product shares this week on my blog. You can visit thepaperpixie.com slash shares. I have both a designer series paper share and a ribbon share, and also an option to get both, which also comes with a free gift of the in color square gems. Those are um, last year's new in colors. There's new square gems. You get those for free if you choose the paper and ribbon share. I am not going to Hawaii next month. I'm bummed, but we had to make the decision back in October um, if we were planning to go or not. And Brian and I just decided it was there was too many unknowns for us to make the decision. So um, I've moved on, but no, I will not be going to, to Maui next month. So um, anyway, so that is the Paper Pixie product shares. Sign up deadline is May 2nd for those. You can, again, sign up if you go to the paperpixie.com slash shares. You can see pictures of my shares from the last catalog so you can get an idea of what shares look like. And um, you can go ahead and sign up for that if you're interested. I also have the In Color Club. This is my second annual In Color Club. It's a way for you to get all the products of each of the five new In Colors. That would be Fresh Freesia, Polished Pink, Evening Evergreen, Soft Succulent, and Pale Papaya. So each month you will actually get all of these products for that particular in color. It's $53 plus $8 shipping per month. And there are two free gifts that come with participating in the in color club. The loose flower flourishes and the ombre gift bags. Those both come with the in colors. The flower flourishes don't have all five in colors, but they're a great coordinating product for that. 
to sign up for that that's the paperpixie.com slash in color club and of course i did these so you could actually see what those links look like so that's for the in color club and this is for shares okay and again that deadline is also march may 2nd okay i'm gonna let's see what else do i have to tell you i think that is it for now. Let me put in my picture in picture here. We're gonna jump into the project. Tonight we are actually gonna be using the Delicate Petals Bundle. This is on page 57 of the January to June 2021 mini catalog. That is this one, the vertical catalog I refer to it as. Um, but I, this is sort of a hidden gem in here. This bundle has some really beautiful sentiments. Thank you for your kindness. Sometimes something wonderful happens to someone who absolutely deserves every good thing. I know there's some people in your life that deserve that sentiment. And then these awesome dies. So I don't know, let me take, I don't want there to be a glare, but so many details to these dies with stitching and cutout. So we're gonna use a few of those tonight. I have got a 3D project and a quick and easy card for you. We're gonna do the 3D project first. It's the most complicated of the two, but it is worth it. So um, again, page 57, the samples on this catalog page are awesome. So make sure to take a look at that. Anywhere from quick and easy with this beautiful flower card and then just some really cool things you can do with this bundle. Um, this bundle will be available until Ju June 30th in the mini catalog. And then I believe it's retiring uh, I think that's the case. I cannot remember. I still have vacation brain. <laughs> okay, so let me show you the box we're making. Now, it's funny. I'm my own worst critic. I love these colors, but for some reason, I didn't love the stripes. So we're going to um, change it up, and the, box, the box base will be in Misty Moonlight. But I'm using the Flowers for Every Season Designer Series paper as my color inspiration. That's often where I start on any project is I go to our awesome designer series papers. Um, this one is actually on sale for $6.90. It's normally $11.50. I think that means it's 40% off because um, this is retiring on May 3rd, but it's still available in the online store last I checked tonight. So. I wanna give a shout out to German demonstrator Birgit Seidler. I hope I'm pronouncing her name right. Her blog is Stempelbunt, and I love her projects. I pixified this. Um, she did provide met, er, imperial measurements as well, but I had to tweak it a little bit. And I also saw some really cool pins on Pinterest from different box making companies, but here is what happens. It's a two by two by two box. And when you open it, it's actually two boxes in one, all from one piece of cardstock, believe it or not. And then I had to add that awesome little, I love hiding sentiments inside boxes, but thank you for your kindness. So we're gonna make this guy first. I promise it's easy, uh, but you definitely have to refer to the template because you're not gonna remember where to cut. But look at this flower on the top. How, like this makes that bundle, this flower I am obsessed with. So I love all the details. It's really easy to put together. Lots of fun. The other cool thing, because we've got two boxes here, is I was able to tie a ribbon around the front box. So we're gonna do that tonight. Let's get started in the box. We've got one piece of Misty Moonlight cardstock, and this measures six and three eighths by nine and a half. Let me tell you sort of the, series of events. So tomorrow's blog post is actually going to be the card because I'm not gonna be able to turn around a video by <laughs> tomorrow morning. And Monday's blog post will be all the details for this project. So I have to wait till Monday, um, but I'll have a shortened video tutorial. So just sit back and relax. All the measurements will be there on Monday as well as the template, etc. So we're actually going to be using the stamp and trimmer for this project because we're going to need to be doing some 16th of an inch increments. Um, the box, that's a great question, Tilly. So I, um, I think tea lights would fit in here, which would be really cute. A little pair of tea lights. Um, I'm pretty sure Ghirardelli squares will fit in here like three, three or so, I think in each box. Um, a, these measure two by two by just under one. Do I make the, I do not Becky. Those are actually Brian King. 
So he will um, announce his swatch books um, probably in the next week or two, I'm guessing. So keep your eye on his blog, stampwithbrian.com. Um, so good question though, Tilly. I think, I mean, you can fit Hershey's nuggets in here. Lots of fun things. Doesn't have to be candy. Good size though. Okay. All right. So let me grab my paper trimmer. And we're going to start on the short side, the six and three eighths inch side. Okay. And we are going to score this and I want to make sure this is what always throws me off with the, the um, paper trimmer is I grab the cutting blade when I shouldn't. So I have to make sure to keep that up and out of the way. We're going to start with a score line at two inches. With the trimmer, I like to go back and forth to make sure I've got a, a score line that um, is nice and sharp. Then we're going to go to two and 15 sixteenths. Now that is just one sixteenth or one tick mark before three. Okay. So two and 15 sixteenths. Then four and 15 sixteenths, so that's a tick mark before five. And then I need to open my arm here. What's the last one? Five and seven eighths. Oh, I didn't need to open the arm. <laughs> so five and seven eighths, okay? So let me, oh, look what I just did. I knew I was gonna do that. Hold on. <laughs> What's that? Oh, it is the Delicate Petals Bundle. I know I'm not the only one that does that. All right, so let's cut this again. Six and three eighths <laughs> by nine and a half. I should have cut extras. I should have known. Okay, let's see if we can get through it again. I should just take this off for now. Okay, <laughs> I can't do it. Okay, so two inches. Two and 15 sixteenths. Again, one tick mark before three. Four and 15 sixteenths. Just before five. And then five and seven eighths. Phew. Okay. Next, we're going to do on the long side, so the nine and three eighths inch side, we're going to do 15 sixteenths. That is just before one. two and 15 sixteenths just before three. And I promise these, there's a reason for the 15 sixteenths, four and 15 sixteenths. That's a lot of 15 sixteenths, then six and 15 sixteenths. So you see where we're going here. We're kind of going every two inches. And then finally eight and 15 sixteenths, which is almost to nine. Okay, so I'm going to repeat those again because I know some of you are probably writing them down. On the six and three eighths inch side, we've got two, two and 15 sixteenths, four and 15 sixteenths, five and seven eighths. Rotate it clockwise. 15 sixteenths, two and 15 sixteenths, four and 15 sixteenths, six and 15 sixteenths, and eight and 15 sixteenths. We're gonna bring the paper trimmer back in a second, but as I was making this, I'm gonna fold and burnish on the score lines first. And then we're gonna come back and make some short cut marks, okay? So let's go ahead and fold and burnish. I'll bring in the template in just a moment. This is way easier to do the folding and burnishing now because if you wait till you've cut some pieces, then it's just, you mess with your paper too much. <laughs> I don't like to fuss over my paper if I don't have to. Plus, you'll be able to see the score lines better after we've folded and burnished. All right, so there's that. Let me grab the template. This is essentially what we're going to end up doing, but I'm going to turn my template this way. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to come back with a paper trimmer and we're going to make some cut marks. I want you to see here that we've got like an eighth of an inch section that we're going to be cutting away. There's two ways you could do this. You could do the score lines and then cut, but I'm going to show you an easy way. We're just going to cut it on the paper trimmer. No need to even do the score lines. So save yourself a couple of cuts, or I should say cutting with your scissors. So I'm going to line up. I've got, let me show the template again. You've got your two inch section along the top. 
You don't want the little half inch section at the top, you want that at the bottom, okay? So I'm gonna line this back up and I'm gonna line up the left edge at three and seven eighths. And I am gonna cut, now I've gotta put my cutting blade back on here. <laughs> now I'm gonna cut from the two inch mark down. Okay, we don't wanna cut in this section. We're gonna make a cut here as well, but we wanna leave these two inch squares intact. Okay, so what I like to do is lift up, make sure this is lined up at three and seven eighths. Line this up, and I'm gonna put my head here in the, oops, as I bonk into the whole thing. I wanna start that at two inches and then cut down. Okay, then I'm just gonna slide this to the left one eighth to four inches. We're gonna do the same thing. So go up to the two inch mark, cut down. Okay, you're gonna have this really weird like strip here, okay? <laughs> then we're gonna slide it down one more. Let me get my arm out for this. To seven and seven eighths. We're gonna do the exact same thing, but we just have to do the one cut. We don't have to do. So seven and seven eighths, I've got that lined up on the left. Again, take the blade up to two inches and you can actually see two inches right on the right side of this cutting, whatever you call this, tray and cut down. Okay, so what you're gonna end up is something that looks like this. Okay, I hope that makes sense. It, this goes much faster than scoring those and then coming in with your scissors. So there is that, okay? Now, this is the part where we need to bring in the template and have this printed out and by us as good reference, okay? Because you do wanna make sure that you're cutting the right things, okay? I'm gonna start here at the top, so let me turn it this way. And you just wanna pay attention, we've got a little half inch section here and a two inch section here. This is actually gonna be the top of our box and the flap that tucks in. But we can remove all of this here. Now we started that by that one cut we made. So then I'm just gonna come in with my scissors here and remove that whole section. Try to be as careful as you can cutting straight lines. We remove that whole thing, okay? Then, and I actually could have kept cutting, is the, temp this template is to scale, Patty. On my blog, um, it depends on how you print it. It's not typically, this one is to scale, but usually when you print it for my blog, it's not necessarily to scale. I'm working on it, I gotta find more hours in the day to create PDFs. But I'm gonna continue cutting up to the next horizontal score line. So we've got that released here, okay? Because we're gonna create these tabs here. All right, so fate, looking at the template here, I'm gonna come in. Good question, Becky. So I typically make a lot of different prototypes. Um, I will say that Birgit had some, um, had the inches measurement, so I started with that, but I had to tweak it a little bit. So um, I just practice and play. Cardstock's cheap, and I just get it to where I'm happy with it, and I feel like I can teach it. So I just cut a little... Um, angled piece here because we're going to cut up each of these vertical score lines. We're going to remove this. This is going to look like, we're, I mean, it's basically two boxes or three boxes in one technically. And then I'm going to cut up, a lot of these things will look familiar to you if you've watched my videos. So I'm cutting up each of those vertical score lines. So we've kind of isolated these three sections. I'm gonna fold this out of the way. We're actually gonna remove this whole section here. So I'm just gonna cut right on the score line. And then what we're left with are these two tabs and you know what we do with tabs, we come in and miter cut those. Get my mess out of the way, <coughs> excuse me. So we're getting close, we've got this part pretty much done. Now we're gonna focus on this bottom section, I guess, of the top box, okay? Now I can come in and actually, we'll fold this out of the way. We're gonna remove that little eighth of an inch strip and then I'm also gonna cut up the rest of that line stopping at the horizontal, okay? See that? And then I'm gonna come in and angle cut here on the side tab, remove this section 
Again, we're basically creating a box here that's attached to this long panel. Then we're going to cut up each of the vertical score lines. Just move your cardstock out of the way. Now we are going to keep this bottom tab because that's going to be the bottom of this particular box. I'm just going to fold stuff out of the way to isolate those two tabs and then come in and miter cut. I try to cut just right down the middle, surely. It's a great question. There are some projects that I will try to completely remove the score line, and this one it works just fine to cut right down the middle of the score line. So this box is done. Let me flip this over because we're looking at it this way. Okay, so we've finished this one box for now. Let's come in and work on this box. So I'm going to start down here and cut up each of the vertical score lines. We'll do that first. It's an odd time to be mowing the lawn. <laughs> I hear the lawnmower next door. And we're going to remove this corner. I also kind of come in in miter here when we remove that. And then we're also going to miter these tabs. I like to fold the cardstock out of the way so I can easily get at those tabs. And then the last thing we're gonna do on this section is remove this lower left section here. It's like a two inch section. These boxes are so cool. So cool for the recipient too. All right, so the bottom part is done and now we're just gonna focus on this part. It's gonna look a lot like this one, okay? So just fold stuff out of the way, flip your cardstock wherever you need to. We're gonna cut up each of those vertical score lines here. Okay, and we're gonna remove this corner section and then I'm going to miter cut those tabs again just folding everything out of the way it's an interesting um, piece of cardstock we're going to be left with again the templates really going to help you and take your time so you don't cut the wrong things like I did with the paper trimmer right all right let me open this up so we can see what it looks like that is the basics of this double double fold box. I don't remember what I'm calling it. <laughs> so there's that, okay? Now what we're gonna do is adhere designer series paper. And I'm gonna use this, this is my favorite pattern from the flowers for every season. It is directional. Now this pattern, it is somewhat directional, but you could put stuff upside down or whichever direction you wanted the stripes in. But what I wanted to point out, we're gonna have five pieces that measure one and seven eighths by one and seven eighths. And then four pieces that measure 13 sixteenths by one and seven eighths. And those are to fit in these little side sections. Now we need to pay attention to the direction that we are adhering these. So I did miss a piece. <laughs> I'm looking at this now. I forgot to cut this one away. So thank you. <laughs> um, that's what the template's for. I'm glad you noticed. All right, so let's remove this guy. There we go. Now that looks better, right? Get all those paper pieces out of the way. All right, so this to try to figure out which box is up versus down, this top part that doesn't have this section, this is the top of this box, and that's going to be top of that box. So that's what you want to keep in mind when you're adhering the designer series paper. So let's start with this box. I'm going to use liquid glue for this. It's been a while since I've done a complicated 3D project. But I hope it was worth the wait. 
All right, so we're gonna do that right in the center. Again, this is one and seven eighths by one and seven eighths, so it's gonna fit just right in there. And then we wanna make sure that our, uh, the skinnier pieces are going up and down as well. And you don't even have to use designer series paper. You could stamp these sections. Um, lots of things you can do. Create your own designer series paper with stamps and ink. You could have uh, cute sentiments on each of these boxes. All right, so then we're also going to put this piece in the same direction, okay? That lawnmower is distracting me. <laughs> Right. So then I'm going to turn it this way because now this is the top of this box. And I think you'll see where I'm going here. Those two will go in this direction, up, down, and these two will go here. Oh, I do. I love this better than the first one. <laughs> I love Misty Moonlight is one of my favorite colors. I didn't notice this Papa Pixie in the house. You haven't seen him. I probably threw him off with changing schedule on him. If you're new to my my lives, my dad joins us every week. We call him Papa Pixie. And sometimes my brother joins us. All right, so adhering that down. This is the relaxing part for me, is gluing all the pieces and parts. So this section right here is technically the bottom, so we won't put any designer series paper there. But then the next thing we're going to do, we've got this last piece. And that this piece is actually going to go in the same directional pattern as these pieces, because ultimately this is going to fold down on our box this way. And if you wanted to save um, a little bit of paper, you could change your dimensions to be more like one and three quarters by one and three quarters. But I just love just that little peak of the blue peeking around from behind it. All right, I'm gonna grab the detailed trio punch. We're gonna round the corners of this top flap. That's gonna help us tuck that into the box. Just fold stuff out of the way so you can get a flat edge to fit in that punch really well. And then I've got a retired item, but I think many of you probably still have this in your stash. Little half inch circle punch. You can grab really any kind of circle punch. You want to put in a bit of a finger notch. Excuse me, you'll see that on the template. And that's just to help the recipient get the box open. And I'm going in about a third of the way into that circle punch. So then we've got that finger notch there. Okay, now before we put this together, let's do a quick stamping. I'm gonna grab a scrap piece of paper and we're gonna do the sentiment, let's see, the thank you sentiment here. This is Poppy Parade ink. Onto basic white. And I'm gonna use the retiring one and a half inch circle punch. It's still available in the online store if you don't already have this in your stash, but it will retire as of May 3rd and it's while supplies last until then. So we'll punch out that sentiment. And I'm gonna put this in, let me picture where this is going, hold on, like that, okay. We're going to put this on the back side. It's a DSP. Um, the designer series paper is flowers for every season. Liquid glue. And if you're not sure which panel to go in, it's the one that doesn't have the designer series paper on the other side. But you want to lay your box so you've got the rounded corner section at the top. 
and then this will just will center that in that square. Now I'm just doing the one layer of cardstock that shouldn't get in the way with the other boxes. Okay, now it's time to put it together. This is so cool. All right, so it's two boxes, right? I think I don't think we need the template out anymore, but this will be on my blog post on Monday. I'm just going to do one box at a time. So like I typically put boxes together, I'm going to fold on the second score line from the left and put liquid glue on that half inch tab. And then I'm going to fold on the first score line from the right. And that's going to line up. This is basically completely flat on my surface using the score lines to line that up just right. Um, good question, Brad and Jackie. Um, if you have any type of punch that has some type of rounded edge. We've got a bunch of label punches that would work. The two inch, I'm not sure, Melanie, if that, I think that, I think all three of the circle punches are still available in the online store. Um, but yeah, Jackie, I would, is that another... I think I did cut, I did finally cut that. Um, I forgot the first time. All right, so this box, we've put it together this way, okay? Now we're gonna glue the bottom together. I've just fold stuff out of the way. This is the bottom that has the two small tabs and the larger flap. I'm gonna just put liquid glue on those tabs. And I'm doing the glue on the tabs because they don't quite meet up all the way because of the way we cut our box. See, there's an eighth of an inch gap. So you're gonna put glue on the tabs as opposed to this piece, because otherwise you'll have glue where you don't want it to go. Then I'm just gonna fold those down, I'm gonna get kind of a flat surface here, and square up the bottom of the box. Now it's gonna be kind of weird because there's only one flap, but it works. Then I like to kind of flip it open, grab my glue bottle, and press from the inside. So that one box is done. So cool. All right, so now, and of course I just totally goofed that. <laughs> I shouldn't have glued the bottom of the box. I was supposed to do this box first. See, this is where I learn with you guys and then I fix the YouTube tutorial. So we can do it this way. All right, I'm folding on the second score line. It should work just fine. Liquid glue on the half inch tab. I'm human, I make mistakes. And then we're just gonna line that up should work just fine there. So now we can focus on the bottom of this box, same thing, putting glue on the tabs. And then folding the flap over. And I just like to pinch on sort of the sides and the corners to get that lined up. And I'll flip it over here and press from the inside. Now again, you have a little bit of a gap here, but your stuff's not gonna fall out, okay? Are you ready for the exciting part? So those just fold up, they got their little tabs, and then this tucks into the front. Now, if yours doesn't tuck in like mine isn't perfectly, there's a quick fix to that. Just come in with your scissors and just shave off just a little bit off the side there. Sometimes when you cut up the score line, it leaves a little bit. I just, I don't know if you can see that. Just a slight little angle there. Now this will fold in and tuck in and hold itself closed. So cool. Oh my gosh, I love this box. <laughs> so that is what it looks like from the sides. You've got your two individual boxes, but then it wraps like a whole box. Again, two by two by two opens to reveal two boxes and a sentiment on the inside. So cute. All right, so let's do a little bit of decorations. I've got a scrap of bumblebee cardstock. Gonna grab my mini stamp and cut and emboss machine. It's not even close. Yeah, that's so weird. This is Bumblebee, in case you're wondering. <laughs> now where did I put my dies? Right here. 
We're gonna grab those two really cool detailed flower dies. I'm gonna cut two of the big ones and one of the little ones. So we'll do two passes through. Put some muscle into it. <laughs> out those holes we'll do that in a second making a mess over here one more pass through Ooh, let me check I've got many oh I think I can get to them that's a great question. And we're stuck in there. There we go. All right, let me get this tidied up for a second. Let me grab a mini ink spot. I think so. Let's see. Really cute idea. Yes. Obviously the boxes are a little big, but really cute. I like it. Good idea. Yay, that's cute. Okay. So I'm just gonna pop out just a couple of the pieces. They're just sitting in there. They're not stuck. I'm gonna bring out my little mini vacuum, just warning you guys <laughs> for all these little pieces. All right, so got those two. Norlene asked about Murph. Murphy's doing better. Thank you, Norlene. Yeah, so spring break last week, I had all these plans to get all this stuff done. I wasn't feeling great. I think it was either my body telling me I needed to take a break or it was maybe the after effects of the vaccine. I have no idea. And then Murphy got sick again. She was sick last time. Okay, sorry for the noise. And yes, I have this linked on my blog at the, uh, the, the paperpixie.com slash favorites. <laughs> but yeah, Murphy's doing better. Thank you, Norlene. All right, so we've got these three flowers. I'm just going to come in and curl the petals just slightly. I love this flower. I can't believe I've, I've only just used it a couple times now. This one will tidy up a bit too, or curl just a little bit. And then I'm just going to layer these three with dimensionals. So one here, I probably don't need three of them, do I? All right, so I'm just gonna stagger the petals here. Pull that up, that dimensional is just the right size to fit underneath the smaller flower. And then we're gonna hide that dimensional peeking through with a rhinestone and of course these are my tiny rhinestones hold on I go through rhinestones like candy rhinestones and dimensionals so we'll get a large rhinestone for the center there I'm using the putty end of the take your pick tool it makes it really easy to pick up gems and then liquid glue I don't I don't I want this to stick pretty good to the lid, so I'm just going to do a little bit of liquid glue. Sort of just around, there's a little circle center in that flower. And then we'll pop that up on the top. Ooh, this is pretty. I do like the Misty Moonlight better. I'll show them both up next to each other. And the other cool thing about this double fold box is I can actually tie a bow around the front. Let's go ahead and open this. I'm going to take the ink spots out. Would nuggets fit? Hershey's nuggets would definitely fit, yes. Um, I, you can get quite a few of them in there, actually. I don't know how many, but a lot. Um, flowers for every season, Becky, is in the annual catalog that is about to be retired. Um, so the 2020 to 2021 annual catalog. But it's beautiful because it's got all five of the 2020 to 2022 in colors. All right, so I'm just basically wrapping ribbon kind of behind that box. And then for some leverage, I'm gonna go ahead and close the box. 
So just to show you, I've got the ribbon kind of going through the box there. Then I'll tie a bow on the front. I've got my reverse tweezers at the ready to hold the knot there. Some people like to put a little glue dot behind that half knot. That works too. I love the reverse tweezers. It's going to cause my box to kind of tilt, but I can still work with it and get that bow tied. Something different. You could also tie the bow around the top, wrap it around the lid, and then I'm just going to zhuzh, and this box will be done. Worth all the work. I don't know how many times you guys judge your ribbons, but it takes me about three or four times to get it just right. Get the loop-de-loos lined up. And then I like to take a mini glue dot, hide it underneath the bow, to keep that knot in place or the bow in place. And we'll come in and trim the ends. There we go. There is our double fold box featuring the delicate petals bundle and the flowers for every season paper, which is for on sale for $6.90. Yeah, I like the blue one better. What do you guys think? Magenta Madness or Misty Moonlight? I don't know. I think it's the stripes. This would be really pretty with the floral pattern. There's one that's got those pretty colors in it too. That one would have been really pretty too. Or, yeah, that's a different one than this one. So you get 48 sheets of six by six paper. Great price, great price right now in the US at 690. But that is the double fold box. So let's make a little coordinating card to go with it. And I'll bring those back in a moment. So I'm gonna start with Misty Moonlight. Again, this one is gonna be a blue base. I'll show you the pink base as well, but I think I'm gonna like the blue one better. So this is a piece of Misty Moonlight that's four and a quarter by 11, and I've scored it in the middle at five and a half. I'll go ahead and burnish that. I've got a four inch by five and a quarter inch piece of basic white that's gonna go on the inside. I know many of you like to stamp those pieces. I typically leave a naked inside. <laughs> because I am a quick, easy, and fast crafter. I don't have a lot of time, so, uh, but I do love receiving cards with that are decorated on the inside. So just glue that down on the inside panel so that will be ready to write in. Then I've got a piece of Poppy Parade that measures three and three quarters by five, and a piece of basic white that measures three and five eighths by four and seven eighths. Those two are going to layer over each other. I'm going to put this off to the side though and do some stamping first. So the first sentiment we're going to do is, not thank you for your kindness, but wishing you a lovely, wishing a lovely birthday to you, I think is what that says. Yes, I'm reading it upside down. This is Poppy Parade again. I'm just going to stamp that in the lower right. And then we've got some really fun images in this stamp set. So let me bring the stamp set back. This image is really cool. It's like a pie shape. You can create a doily with it. It's a beautiful accent piece. We're gonna use these flowers. And I think it's just, oh, and then these really pretty leaves. We're gonna build a little, little bit of a collage, so. I'm gonna grab my scrap piece of basic white. We're gonna do a quick die cut piece with the big flower and magenta madness. My husband's preventing piles of stuff from falling over <laughs> onto his laptop. Ooh. This might be my favorite. I don't know, between this one and the piece that looks like a doily, look at that stamp. Mm. So pretty in magenta madness. There's a die that will cut this guy out. Bring the mini back, because this will fit in the mini. As I make a mess here, hold on. Just put it on the floor. Does anybody throw their stuff on the floor? <laughs> 
All right, so. Grabbing a mini post-it note here. We'll hold that this guy in place. Run him through. Oh, so pretty. I love that pair of flowers. All right, so I'm just kind of eyeballing a couple of things. Let's bring in Bumblebee and a little doily piece here. Move this guy out of the way. Just kind of, it's a handmade card, so we're just gonna wing, oh, wing it as I put my hand in. Hold on. should know better and have baby wipes. Okay, so then we'll ink this up. And I'm gonna start with this sort of like a pie shape, but the bottom is horizontal. Let's see, let's do that about here. Look how cool that pattern is. It does look like a slice of pizza, doesn't it? And then this one, we're going to line up just adjacent to it. And that's kind of going up and down. So there's that. I'm again eyeballing what this is going to look like. Okay, now I've got just jade and those two leaves. They're two different sizes. This is one of the greens from the flowers for every season. Again, taking my color inspiration from that. Let's see. All right. Just going to pair these together, the two different sizes. And then again, I'm eyeballing and see, I've got a big old ink smudge. <laughs> An opportunity for embellishment, right? Let's do this one there. There we go. Let's glue this down to the poppy parade. Oh yeah, I smudged a lot on that card. Awesome. Then we'll glue this down to the card base. Okay, grabbing dimensionals, wherever I threw those. <laughs> Grabbing another sheet of them. So I'm just gonna do four dimensionals on the back of the Magenta Madness bunch of flowers. I'm gonna pop this up here, like so, then Some rhinestones. And guess what? We're going to put. Oh, that's right. Let's see if my sand eraser. Does anybody have those Tombow sand erasers? I believe this is linked on my blog, but this is an eraser with sand in it. And I might be able to salvage that little ink spot. The color combinations came from the. Flowers for Every Season Designer Series Paper, this guy. So that's where I got that color, the color combination from. I'm just coming in and trying to get rid of that smudge. This thing's a lifesaver. It's linked on my favorites page. Got a little smudge up here. It's pretty good for getting um, adhesive off as well. So that disappeared there, yay. 
Now I actually, the only thing I might change about this card is I might do Magenta Madness for that layer, but let me show you the other version. This is the one with the Magenta Madness base. Again, it's just so bright, but I like the blue. I don't know, you gotta tell me what you think. But I just love the combination of the flowers, the leaves, and this doily pattern for the coordinating card. So we've got this with the blue card. Yeah, that needs to be Magenta Madness, I think. <laughs> and then this goes with this card. So those are the projects for tonight. How do we do? What time is it? Oh, okay. We're going to do Prize Patrol. Okay. So again, card will post to my blog tomorrow. In tomorrow's blog post, the project will post on Monday's blog post. I don't post on my blog on the weekends. <laughs> so there is that. Um, I'm going to announce one of the winners. I didn't write down the other winner. She's already claimed her prize. Um, but I have a winner that has not claimed her prize yet. So let me get to... Um, okay, here we go. So from two weeks ago, Venus Hines, she watched it on YouTube with hashtag prize patrol. So she's going to be getting the dandy garden memories and more cards and envelopes and the ladybug trinkets and a handmade card from my stash. So Venus, if you're watching, you can claim prize patrol here at the paperpixie.com slash prize patrol. I'll get that in the mail to you. And tonight's prize patrol I have two of the Garden Wishes stamp set. Sorry, I'm getting a glare there. So to participate, um, both my YouTube and my Facebook audience can participate. Um, but if you're watching on YouTube, you wanna leave hashtag prize patrol in the comments of the video, not the live chat, because I can't go back and grab the live chat. So you wanna make sure that you leave hashtag prize patrol in the comments of the video if you're watching on YouTube. If you're watching on Facebook, you know where to leave your comments. I will choose winners next Wednesday. So this is available to both live watchers and replay watchers. Again, US residents only. I only ship within the US. And don't forget, hashtag prize patrol, no spaces. Make sure you spell it right so you get entered to win. And that is tonight's live with the paper pixie. So thank you so much for joining me tonight. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me anytime. Again, my product shares are open for sign up now through May 2nd, as well as my In Color Club. And then if you would like to get your hands on a copy of the new catalog and you don't already have a demonstrator or you haven't shopped with me in a while, you can request that at thepaperpixie.com slash happy mail. So thanks for joining me again, card tomorrow, 3D project Monday at thepaperpixie.com. And I will see you live next Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern time for the next episode 190, I think, of um, Live with the Paper Pixie. Thanks, everybody. Have a wonderful and blessed week. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you soon. Bye.